Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to episode one of our new podcast, Books to Films. In today's podcast, we're going to be taking a look at both the book and film versions of Psycho. Psycho was written by Robert Block in 1959. It is about a man named Norman Bates, who ran a motel and lived with his mother, who wasn't quite right. It was adapted into a film by Alfred Hitchcock in 1960, with the screenplay written by Joseph Stefano. To this day, both iterations shock and scare viewers and readers alike. From 1983 to 1990, Universal produced three cinematic sequels. However, in 1982, Robert Block penned his own follow-up. To begin with, we're taking a look at Block's novel and Hitchcock's film, then we're moving on to the book and film versions of Psycho 2, and see how much of a departure the stories are, carrying on will leaf over Psycho's 3 and 4 the beginning, and wrap up on Block's final book, Psycho House. In comparison, the first book and film are close to a T. However, there are some details which stand out significantly when you compare them. For instance, Marion's name in the book is Mary, and she is a long-haired brunette, as opposed to the short-haired blonde played by Janet Leigh in the film. Marion's death is shorter and more brutal in the novel as opposed to the film. The book has her decapitated in the shower, while the film has her stabbed multiple times, before falling dead on the bathroom floor. Norman is depicted as an overweight, middle-aged, alcoholic individual who is a very smart person as he reads a lot of books and is also interested in taxidermy. In the film, Norman is a slim, sober and attractive young man, played by Anthony Perkins. In the book, Norman has three personalities. Norman, which is childlike. Mother, who is the violent personality, relatively unchanged. And Normal that understands that there are multiple personalities breaking out all at once. The film only touched lightly on the third personality, whilst focusing mostly on Norman and Mother's personality. The dynamic between Norman and Mother is explored in greater detail in, in the book. The characters of Sam and Lila in the book are relatively the same in both versions. However, in the book, they have a romance on the side whilst trying to find out what happened to Marion, Lila's sister. The detective Arbogast in the book is the same as he is in the film, however his death is slightly different as opposed to on screen. He is sliced to death with a razor in the doorway of the house in the book, while on film he is attacked with a knife at the top of the stairs, falls down the stairs, and is then stabbed to death. In the climax, Sam explains to Lila Norman's psychosis in the book, however on film this is represented by Dr. Richmond, played by Simon Oakland. In the book, Norman is identified as a transvestite, while on film, his cross-dressing is explained by Dr. Richmond that this was to keep alive the illusion of his mother being alive. These are the differences between the book and film versions of the original Psycho. Now we are moving on to the sequel, Psycho 2. The storyline of Robert Block's Psycho 2 differs very drastically from the film, which was released a year after. Both versions take place 22 years after the first book and film, respectively. In the book, Norman is incarcerated in an asylum, reflecting on his past. When two nuns on a goodwill mission visit the asylum, Norman snaps, kills one of the nuns, and escapes using her habit as a disguise. Norman's doctor, Adam Claiborne, finds out that a film is being produced in Hollywood. The film is about Norman and his life. Claiborne reaches the conclusion that Norman is going to Hollywood to kill everyone involved with the production. In the film, Norman is released from care as he is given a second chance to fit back into society. Suddenly, someone is killing the people on and around the Bates property with the apparent motive of framing Norman. In the book, Robert Block kills off Norman around the 7th and 8th chapters. Until the climax, Block, very cleverly, creates the illusion that Norman is still alive and killing, keeping the identity a secret until the final chapter of the book. In the film version of Psycho 2, Lila returns, along with her daughter Mary, as they both work together to frame Norman 
by undermining his sense of sanity through dressing up as his mother, Lila is killed off by the murderer before the end of the film, and Mary is shot to death by the police officers before she could kill Norman in the basement of the house. In the book version, Lila is married to Sam, Marion's ex-boyfriend. They are both killed in Sam's hardware store. In the film, the killer is revealed to be a character named Emma Spool, who is secretly Norman's real mother. She tells Norman this, and he kills her. In the end, he props her body in the bedroom window. In the book, the killer is revealed to be Adam Claiborne, Norman's psychiatrist. It is explained by Dr. Steiner, Adam Sr., that Norman's psychosis had somehow affected his own sanity and drove him to murder after hearing about Norman's death, which was rumour until confirmed by an autopsy near the end of the book. Adam is committed and suffers from Norman's madness at the end of the story. Before this revelation, the film's director, Hanto Vizzini, who looks similar to Norman, was hinted as a suspect. Now that we have covered both versions of Psycho 2, we are moving on to the last two films, Psycho 3 and 4, the beginning, and the last book, Psycho House. Psycho 3 and 4 follow separate continuities. Psycho 3 takes place one month after the events of Psycho 2, continuing and retconning the Emma Spall story arc. Psycho 4 acts as a part prequel, ignoring 2 and 3 completely. It has been rumoured that the book Psycho House, released in 1990, alongside Psycho 4, was partially inspired by the 1987 TV pilot Bates Motel. Again, both the book and the films are unrelated. Psycho 3 has Norman killing again. This time, he has a love interest with a suicidal nun who disgraced herself from her convent, while a reporter tries to probe Norman for the chance of a big story and expose the recent murders he has committed. Psycho 4 takes place 30 years after the original film by Alfred Hitchcock, and has Norman recount his early life to a late night radio show, hosted by CCH Pounder. This shows us how Norman became the disturbed individual that which we see in the original film. The TV pilot Bates Motel follows a separate storyline from the books and the films completely. Norman befriends a young boy who grows up after Norman passes away in care, and he becomes the sole owner of the Bates Motel and house. Psycho House takes place eight years after Block's book Psycho 2. In this chain of events, Norman Bates is dead and buried, but his legacy continues. Businessman Otto Remsbach has rebuilt the house and motel as a tourist attraction. It is mentioned in Psycho 2 that the property was burnt down by the folk at Fairfail after Norman's arrest. Suddenly, the body of a teenager is found inside the house. Crime writer Amy Haynes sees the killings as an opportunity for fame and fortune. However, her informants keep turning up murdered one after another, and the killer is very close by, possibly one of the townsfolk, or one of the investors of the Bates Motel attraction. The nun in Psycho 3 may have been partially inspired by one of the nuns from Block Psycho 2. In Psycho House, a character, Eric Dunstable, who is a demonologist, hypothesizes that a demon infected the Bates family, from the original members who built the house right down to Mother and Norman. Then it somehow jumped to Adam Claiborne, and now it has moved on to somebody else. This idea is refuted by the main characters, and it is not the reason behind the killings in the story at all. The ending of Psycho House is short in comparison to the previous books. The killer is revealed to be a banker, who made a deal with Remsbach and the others involved, killed the girl when he stole the replica of Mother's corpse, and murdered the others, and then tried to kill Amy. He is then killed by the police officers in the motel office, after killing Eric Dunstable, who tried to burn down the office with gasoline. And this concludes episode 1 of Books to Films. Thank you for tuning in to this podcast, have a great day, and remember... We all go a little mad sometimes, haven't you?